This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. What's up guys? So today we are going to move this old condenser unit here. The compressor's bad, so we're gonna put a brand new compressor in it. We're gonna yank out the uh, unit here and they're gonna yank the inside units out. We're gonna move it over to another warehouse, get it moved and we'll get the compressor, which it was out of refrigerant. So I'm hoping it was recovered already. If not, we're gonna put a pressure test on it either way. So we got it bolted up, got everything blown off, so they have to put the uh, seals from that back onto over here. Notice this on the discharge, I've never noticed that before. Looks like it's a restrictor baffle plate on the sockets for the, uh, that I needed to perfect out of my Klein set there. Okay, inside there we had gaskets. All the gaskets we need. The other compressor was changed in 13. 40K 3R22M. 22M, so yeah, TSK 800. TSK 800, so we got a match. And then voltage, 208, 460 volt. That's why we've got all this wiring here we gotta do. So we gotta wire it up for uh, 480 volts. So that's gonna have to be uh, adjusted so that you've got the correct wiring which the other one, uh, you can see what they've done here. This is the pattern, so we'll most likely have the same thing, then we'll put our bolt lugs there, and that's what uh, that's how you know what voltage is for. It ended up being right around a well, one inch mark. This little kit here has actually been kind of nice. It's not very expensive. Got me all the way up to inch and a quarter. Uh, got the oil safety out. You can see that thing's got a lot of crap in it. So hopefully that comes with a new copper seal. We're gonna go ahead and clean that out with some brake cleaner. Obviously, I'm not using my GoPro at this given moment, but definitely use the Bach wrench on that or a socket. You don't want to, the crescent wrench will screw it up. Looks a lot better than it did, that's for sure. Spray it inside, backside. Let's see what kind of oil we get. That ain't too bad. Oh, that's why we had some, had some uh, pressure on there. I'd say probably one of my most favorite toys for five bucks or whatever it is from, I don't know, I like this one because it fits my drill. It's got the hex head and stuff instead of this the regular drill that one right there i get it from lowe's on average anyhow we got this uh completely cleaned up we're gonna go ahead and put a touch of nylon on it can you get away without it sure but it's a brand new compressor i want to try to make sure everything's done extra special that way we don't have any problems all right got that all jizzied up get that back in there everything's clean on my corners here so that, that seal, I went ahead and put a little bit of nylog on that. And so good to go there. Yeah, this is Hertzy or some crap. I don't know. It fits pretty doggone good. That's what's kind of nice. There we go. Don't need to get too stupid, but it's a nice set. It seems to fit. I mean, everything's pretty, I mean, you got a little bit of play there. Not granted, it may not be one full inch, but 
either way, I mean, this little set, it's pretty much most things you're gonna need. We've got seven and four, boom, 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 exact same thing. Across the line, 480, 460, which is what we're rolling with. Uh, here's part to start windings. That's why they had, that's a ordeals there. That's when you energize one contactor, then another contactor to kind of get the thing going. It's for big, uh, big units. You got your condenser fans. That's not good. What did we steal out of that? 480 to 2040 and then coming down to as low as either 240 or 120 depending on how it's wired up so here's the 480 volt section that's wired there so that's how they're controlling their contactors and stuff all with that there now we've got that was unhooked i'm hoping that's where it went most likely is that went to a relay. You can just see that Honeywell looking relay or whatever brand you want to call it. There's that extra set of windings I was telling you about for partial start. And it looks like they had a contactor at one time, but it's not how they're doing it now. And then over here's all of our pressure switches and clocks and miscellaneous. So there's our Centronic. That's that sensor we just switched over. Reset on. That's nice. The rubber's starting to take a dump. There we go. Got a delay here. It looks like it's been bypassed. It's always great. Hopefully they didn't jack or ruining too much stuff. We're gonna get a brand new contactor in there. Anytime you change compressor, three phase especially. Contactor, brand new. This was started up back in 08. So it's just like a spring chicken. This stuff is expensive, guys. If you just do residential and stuff, you would think, yeah, I would just put a new one in there for 10 grand, 15 grand. No, no, you're, you're not, no. That's the reason why I'm fixing a lot of this stuff that looks like garbage, because the stuff is stupid money. Plus, they already own it, so why not just go ahead and do it? Use what you got, why not? And besides, you getting paid to do the job, just do it, whatever. I wanna kinda hold off on opening the compressor till the very last minute, so I'm gonna go ahead and fool around with the electrical. Somebody asked about these. These are actually only about a couple months old, but because they're clear, they look like crap. But they got a gel this time. I usually go with the foam, because it usually lasts longer. The gel's held up pretty good. So. We got to the electrical section here. We got that there. That helps keep it from twisting left and right. Here is our aluminum ordeal there. So we get all these in place. Those bolts, you know, are already tweaked down. And then these have like a lock washer already in there. And then we've got our jumpers here that jump winding to winding. Now these windings right here, these lugs, literally go into the compressor right through here. So that's why a lot of times we'll check in that area to see if you got any leaks because it can leak through there and you can replace the seals. Okay, that is a 7 16 These are made to be ran in your drill, but I'm not gonna run my drill on this. I don't want to take a chance of getting too over rambunctious here and screwing myself. So we're gonna hand tighten that thing so that we can tell where our torque's at. And the smaller the wrench you use, the less likely you are snapping it off. One thing I see here, they gotta connect back to the new one there and you really want those marked. Somebody did do it somewhat. See, it's got two marks, that one's got three marks, that one's got one mark, so the blue ones are marked. Make sure if you do use one of these screwdrivers, which is the right screwdriver for knocking stuff out, but definitely the wrong screwdriver to do any electrical work because that shaft goes right through there and will shock the living snot out of you. Not that this camera does real good, but you can see we're jumping seven to four together. So by doing that, you're basically making that one longer wire. So you're going down here seven to four, and boom, to there's one to five, comes along, boom, there's to two, and nine to six, which then comes around to that terminal there. So here is our motor connector stuff, L1, L2, M1, M1, M2, sensor one, two, and three, and in common. Inside that manual, basically you got two power wires going into that motor protector, and you got two wires basically for the switching to break the contactor. So over here is the module coming into the service mate here. I've already hooked one side that I removed from there to my meter. I wanted to make sure that I knew which one was my module. So by taking my meter over here, I just wanted to verify it. And sure enough, you can hear it beeping. So that's the one lead right there. That's your motor protector right there. We're gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll figure out which ones are our power wires. That's how we're gonna fix this up so that we make sure we got it wired right. So many wires that are dangled here. I hate this crap. You get onto something that somebody else has been doing a lot of work on and you can tell this unit was junk. I mean, it had a bad compressor. 
So people steal parts out of it. This is the other one. Let's see which one that one is. Worst case scenario, I'll get this thing wired back to there and I'll just pick two wires and make sure I get power to it. There it is. So that's the other one and that one was labeled number two. So we know for a fact that the control circuit is these two right here. I feel confident that that's correct and I don't have to worry about that uh, being wrong and possibly damaging something. All I need to make this thing roll is two wires for the power module, the module's power. And we'll see if we can figure out which of these wires were doing that. You would think though that it would have been just open close switch only. Because basically what that does is it reports back to here and you can see if it's tripped and then you can also put your meter leads in between there and you can actually measure to see if the switch is open or closed. Yeah, this is just scary because you're just like, man, is any of this right? Control module goes to M1, M2, which is what we hooked up to, which should be normally closed. They're jumping it to the other mod. So that's number T2. Look at that, number three. So that was correct. I just did not want to aimlessly go blind in here and just stick it wherever and hope it worked. And then all of a sudden, bzz, bzz, and then, you know, bad things have happened. It's really hard to get the smoke back inside of it after it comes out. Going here off 16, comes up over fuse one. There's T1, T2. There's T1, T2. Let's see if we can get that probe to stick in there on one of those back probes there. Yeah, let's speed terminal one. Boom, got it, sweet. So we know we got that right. Makes me feel a lot better. Now for the other ones, and this could all have been avoided if I would have paid a little better attention to it. Kind of screwed up there. You got a bunch of people and everybody's waiting. I had guys that needed to leave and go deal with some other storm damage stuff somewhere else. And they were trying to get done, get the crane out of here to get somewhere else. And you know, you're trying to hustle to get it. And then that's when you make mistakes. That's why I don't get in a huge hurry about stuff. I never have, I try not to. It just does not pay off to get in a huge hurry. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. That was the way the other person had it. I don't know if I like it at all. It makes me a little bit leery. Thing I worry about is it might vibrate into the plate or something stupid. And I have always liked these type of Allen wrenches because they're easier to get into tight spots most of the time. But there is some times where they don't work very good. Now we can tuck these other ones down. I was gonna chop them off. I was really tempted to do it. It's like, you know what? They can pull new wire if they need it. So we got our restrictor plate here. Basically it gets rid of the vibration. So heated it up with the torch a little bit, got the gaskets right off, no problem. Clean the bottom of our discharge service valve there and that one there, so they're all clean. Trying to get this compressor opened up is the very last thing. Put a little nylog on it here in a second. Um, what we have here, I completely forgot, we yanked some pressure switches out. So we got pressure switch is what one of them is. We got a blue one there that was wire nutted off beforehand, so it's probably just pressure switch only. We transplanted this. So we just swapped the gasket over. And so we've just taken this all apart. No, not at all. Now, do, do I need to put any? Yeah, we got some white stuff there. I got some pipe dope. You may have to take the cap off of it. I, I don't remember, I didn't cut it or what I didn't do. If it don't come, yeah, it does come out good. We got this in there, we got that new seal. Um, top and bottom of the seal, uh, we got the nylog on it. I went ahead and oiled my bolts there because I wanted to, you know, just that way I got nice and tight. So anyhow, without, you know, season up. So we've got this here, we're gonna pop this. I went ahead and front seated that valve so we're actually isolated, so we're not just setting our absorbing moisture. So that's what I'm gonna do for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel this off and then we're gonna go ahead and get that new one on and then We'll go ahead and finish wiring things up and then eventually we'll start uh, getting this system under pressure and we'll do a leak check on it. <sighs> All right, so we got everything back together here. We're gonna purge nitrogen through the suction. It's gonna come out through the valves right out the front here and that's gonna at least break any air we got in there. And then we'll start working on the other side. So you can push through the valves, no problem. Hopefully pushes most of the air out of the system because these valves, the way they are when you're front seated, cranked in, 
you're open to the compressor. So we can do a little bit more and then we'll pull off. I don't need some stupid amount on there. Just to keep it in a positive. Okay, at least it tells me whether I'm leaking around my... Seals there. There, it's about 25. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this uh, cap on there before we lose all of it. There we go. We keep her in a good positive. Once again, front seated, open to the back side. Total opposite of how residential crap is, where you actually have access to the line set. We don't have that on that, so we're on that direction there. Wouldn't hurt to have a newer sight and glass indicator there. We'll say something about it. We'll see whether it happens Good or night. not. We didn't have a lot in that one bottle. This one here already, just about 1,500. Yet we're only 100 pounds. Sprayed a little oil on that to see if uh, see if we can get the cap on a little snugger. Yeah. It's real, real encouraging when the oil's bubbling on top of it. Yeah, no leaks here, bud. No no leaks at all here. No, nothing to see. Nothing to see here. Look at that. All better now. No leaks now. All better. Mm-hmm. Didn't feel like going back to shop and grabbing the big bottle, but basically what we probably needed. That's what we should have had, but... So I was able to tighten that packing nut, sprayed it with soap, went ahead and sprayed my filter dryer, some of the other fittings down there, sprayed all my high side stuff over here, a little fitting down there on the uh, discharge, sprayed my receivers up here. We're looking for big the stuff. When I come back and they actually got everything hooked up, I'll do a full-fledged pressure test. They're gonna pressure test the evaporators separate from the system as well when they get those taken down. That's where we're at on it. I think we're about ready to wrap this thing up. Found one leak. Look at that. Right on the discharge. That ain't good. That's it. Not good. You wouldn't think it worked, but you give it long enough, it'll show up. I don't really see anything on any of that. Uh, we did get the contactor replaced. Got its 75 on there, got the date on it. Everything's cranked in. Electricians have got that part done. New conduit ran. Oh wow, it's not even tight. All right, so it's a funny looking flanger because it looks like it kind of gets thin in the middle. Kind of goes out on the edge. Let's go ahead and squirt that again. And then, thing is, I don't want to lose my nitrogen. Otherwise, I just throw a seal in it right now. I'm pretty sure I had an extra circular seal that would fit just fine. But I don't want to lose my nitrogen that I've got on it. Nice and solid stream. A little there, go a little on the packing area, a little packing here. Issue a little bit here on the front. All right, guys, I didn't do an ending there. That wrapped the day up. Spent most of the day there doing that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I've got to go back and uh, finish it up. So I'm assuming that might be somewhere in the midweek. Has to be done by next Friday. So anyhow, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the video. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.